In 2014, Fotis Dulas and Jennifer Faber Dulas tied the knot, welcoming five children into their family. However, their marriage faced significant challenges leading to a critical moment on May 30th, 2017, when Jennifer sought an emergency order for full custody of their children amidst their divorce proceedings. Despite her efforts, the court denied her request, instead mandating shared custody until the divorce could be finalized. Jennifer's application for the emergency order was fueled by serious allegations against Fotis. She claimed that he had threatened to kidnap their children if she did not concede to his demands regarding their divorce settlement. Furthermore, she reported that Fotis had purchased a gun within the same year, escalating her fears for her and her children's safety. The situation further deteriorated on June 3, 2017. According to Jennifer, Fotis exhibited uncontrollable rage and blamed her for organizing activities for their children on a Saturday morning. She described a frightening encounter where Fotis blocked her exit from a room, subjecting her to verbal abuse and physical intimidation. Jennifer expressed a profound fear of her husband, stating, I am afraid of my husband. She anticipated that her actions, including filing for divorce and the motion for custody, would provoke Fotis into retaliation, potentially putting her in harm's way. She depicted Fotis as a man who believed he must always prevail, regardless of the consequences, describing him as dangerous and ruthless when he felt aggrieved. On June 3rd, 2017, Fotis Dulos responded to the allegations made against him in an amended reply to the motion filed by Jennifer. He maintained that his purchase of a gun in 2017 was a lawful act intended solely for the security of their home. Fotis refuted claims of behaving in an irrational, unsafe, bullying, threatening or controlling manner. Fotis firmly denied ever threatening to kidnap their children. He also stated that he had never physically threatened, stalked or assaulted Jennifer. In his response, Fotis highlighted accusations made by Jennifer, where she allegedly labelled him a psychopath and conveyed to their children that he was indifferent towards them. May 24, 2019, timeline of Jennifer Faber Dulos's disappearance. 7.57 a.m. Jennifer Faber Dulos sends her final text message to her babysitter, Lauren Almeida. 7.58 a.m. Jennifer is seen driving her children to New Canaan Country School in her 2017 Black Chevrolet Suburban. 8.05 a.m. Surveillance footage captures Jennifer returning to her residence at 69 Wells Lane. During the window between 8.05 a.m. and 10.25 a.m., it is believed Jennifer was murdered at her home. 10.25 a.m. Jennifer's Suburban is observed leaving her house with investigators suspecting Fotis Dulos was driving, carrying Jennifer's body and cleanup materials. 10.29 a.m. The vehicle is spotted southbound on Weed Street. 10.38 a.m. Jennifer's cell phone is located at 200 Lapham RD in New Canaan, where her car would later be found abandoned. 11.09 a.m. Jennifer's phone disconnects from the Verizon network, indicating it was turned off or disabled. 11.12 a.m. Shortly after Jennifer's phone goes offline, Fotis is seen driving along the Merritt Parkway away from New Canaan. 1.37 p.m. Fotis' phone signals his arrival at 80 Mountain Spring Road in Farmington, staying until 3.38 p.m. Fotis leaves 80 Mountain Spring Road for 4 Jefferson Crossing. 5.21 p.m. Fotis returns to 80 Mountain Spring Road. 5.34 p.m. Fotis departs again for 4 Jefferson Crossing. 7.10 p.m. The mobile devices of Fotis and Michelle Troconis are traced to the vicinity of Albany Avenue in Hartford. 7.41 p.m. Fotis travels back to 4 Jefferson Crossing, concluding the day's recorded movements. On June 1, 2019, significant developments occurred in the investigation into Jennifer Faber Dulos's disappearance. Fotis Dulos and Michelle Troconis were, were arrested and faced charges related to tampering with or fabricating physical evidence and hindering prosecution. Despite the serious allegations against them, 
both Fotis and Michelle entered pleas of not guilty to the charges presented. This marked a pivotal moment in the case, as authorities moved forward with legal action against individuals closely connected to the events surrounding Jennifer's disappearance. On July 3rd, 2019, Fotis Dulos made a rare public statement amidst the ongoing investigation into Jennifer Farber Dulos's disappearance and the charges against him. In this statement, Fotis addressed the negative public perception surrounding him, acknowledging that he could understand why people might view him as a monster based on the limited information available to the public about the case. This communication from Fotis was an attempt to express his perspective on the situation as he faced growing scrutiny and legal challenges. Between September 4 and September 5, 2019, the case surrounding Jennifer Farber Dulos's disappearance saw further developments. Fotis Dulos was arrested for a second time on September 4, facing an additional charge of tampering with evidence. The following day, Michelle Troconis also surrendered to authorities and was similarly charged with an additional count of tampering with evidence. Both Fotis and Michelle maintained their innocence, pleading not guilty to the new charges. The additional charges were bolstered by the discovery of clothes and sponges stained with Jennifer's blood in trash cans in Hartford. Arrest warrants detailed evidence from surveillance footage that showed a man believed to be Fotis, discarding garbage bags into multiple receptacles. Furthermore, these documents noted that a woman, resembling Michelle Traconis, was observed in the passenger seat of the man's vehicle implicating both individuals further in the case. This evidence played a crucial role in the subsequent legal actions taken against Fotis and Michelle. On September 12, 2019, state police intensified their investigation into Jennifer Farber Dulos's disappearance by searching reservoirs in West Hartford. To aid in their efforts, officials deployed cadaver-sniffing dogs which are specifically trained to detect the presence of human remains. This approach allowed for an extensive search of the areas surrounding the water, highlighting the rigorous efforts by law enforcement to uncover evidence pertinent to the case. On January 7, 2020, state police made a significant breakthrough in the case by arresting Fotis Dulos at his residence in Farmington. He was charged with capital murder, murder and kidnapping, to which he entered a plea of not guilty. According to the arrest warrant, the charges stemmed from allegations that Fotis ambushed Jennifer at her home, where a violent encounter occurred in the garage, evidenced by discovered bloodstains. The warrant detailed that Fotis allegedly subdued Jennifer using zip ties, placed her in her own vehicle, and then attempted to clean the garage to remove any signs of the altercation. The incident was described by the medical examiner as a homicide of violence, suggesting Jennifer's death resulted from a brutal attack involving possibly both blunt force and sharp force injuries, such as being beaten or stabbed. This description paints a grim picture of the circumstances surrounding Jennifer's disappearance and subsequent murder. Alongside the developments involving Fotis Dulos, state police also arrested Michelle Traconis, charging her with conspiracy to commit murder. This charge was based on allegations in the arrest warrant that Michelle had provided false information regarding the last time she saw her boyfriend, Fotis Dulos, on the morning of Jennifer Farber Dulos's disappearance. Michelle Traconis responded to the serious allegations by pleading not guilty. This development added another layer of complexity to the case, implicating her further in the events surrounding Jennifer's tragic disappearance and suggesting a coordinated effort to mislead investigators. On the same day, Kent Mauhini, an attorney and friend of Fotis Dulos, found himself facing legal troubles connected to the Jennifer Farber Dulos case. State police arrested Mauhini and charged him with conspiracy to commit murder. The arrest warrant highlighted Mauhini's inconsistent accounts regarding his interactions with Fotis Dulos and accused him of assisting in the cover-up of Jennifer's murder. In response to these charges, Kent entered a plea of not guilty. 
This development indicated the widening scope of the investigation, implicating individuals closely associated with Fotis Doulos, and suggesting a possible network of involvement in the events leading to Jennifer's disappearance. On January 28, 2020, Fotis Dulo missed a crucial court appearance for an emergency bail hearing, a situation that could have led to his return to jail. Concerned by his absence, Farmington police conducted a wellness check at his residence. Upon arrival, they observed him through a garage window, appearing slumped over in the driver's seat of his vehicle. Prompting immediate action, Emergency personnel quickly forced entry into the garage and initiated CPR on Fotis for approximately 30 minutes. After discovering a pulse, Fotis was urgently transported to Yukon Health Center by ambulance. Due to the severity of his condition, he was later airlifted to the Jacobi Medical Center in the Bronx. There, Fotis received specialized treatment in a hyperbaric chamber for carbon monoxide poisoning indicating a critical and life-threatening situation. On January 30th, 2020, at 5.52 p.m., Fotis Dulos was declared dead following a suicide attempt. A handwritten note, purportedly authored by Fotis and obtained by sources, revealed his final words asserting his innocence and that of those charged alongside him. In the note, Fotis emphatically stated, I refused to spend even an hour more in jail for something I had nothing to do with. He went further to absolve Michelle Traconis and Kent Mahini of any involvement in Jennifer Faber Dulos's disappearance, expressing a clear desire to clear their names as part of his final statements. This tragic end underscored the intense pressures and complexities surrounding the case, leaving unresolved questions and deepening the mystery of Jennifer's disappearance. On March 2, 2020, the murder case involving Fotis Dulos reached a conclusion when a judge accepted a nolle prosequi request from prosecutors, leading to the dismissal of the murder charges against him. This legal motion, nolle prosequi, is not equivalent to an acquittal, but rather a recognition that the case against Fotis could not proceed primarily due to his death. During the hearing, Fotis's attorney argued that his client had been wrongfully accused, suggesting an alternative narrative where another individual was responsible for Jennifer Farber Dulos's murder. This unidentified person allegedly planted a pile of bloody clothing on the porch, which were the same items Fotis was captured disposing of in a trash bin on a Hartford street, according to surveillance footage. This assertion aimed to present Fotis not as the perpetrator, but as a victim of framing, adding another layer of complexity and controversy to the already intricate case. On May 20th, 2020, Michelle Troconis released her sole public statement regarding the case, expressing her profound sadness for the five Dulos children who faced the loss of both parents within a single year. In her statement, Michelle reflected on her personal error in placing her trust in Fotis Dulos. She acknowledged that there was much more she wished she could disclose, but maintained that she had no knowledge concerning the circumstances of Jennifer Faber Dulos's disappearance. Michelle's statement highlighted her regret and the complexity of her position within the tragic events that unfolded. On August 20th, 2020, the legal proceedings surrounding the case took another turn as state prosecutors introduced additional charges against Michelle Traconis. They filed two new counts of conspiracy to commit evidence tampering, alleging her involvement in attempts to conceal the murder of Jennifer Faber Dulos. Michelle's attorney, John Schoenhorn, firmly denied these accusations on her behalf. Specifically, one of the new charges suggested Michelle's participation in cleaning a pickup truck which authorities believe Fotis Dulos used to travel to New Canaan on the morning Jennifer disappeared. This development indicated ongoing efforts by law enforcement to piece together the events leading to Jennifer's tragic fate and hold those involved accountable. On January 19, 2021, the investigation into Jennifer Farber Dulos's disappearance saw further activity as investigators focused their attention on 80 Mountain Spring Ard in Farmington 
a property once owned by the Four Group, a company under Fotis Doulos's ownership. The presence of an excavator and a septic truck at the site signalled a significant search effort. State trooper Jose Dorellas commented on the operation. Emphasising the investigative team's commitment to providing closure to Jennifer's family. He acknowledged the active status of the investigation and noted the limitations this placed on the amount of information that could be publicly disclosed. This phase of the investigation underscored the ongoing efforts to uncover the truth behind Jennifer's disappearance. On December 20, 2021, the investigation into Jennifer Farber Doulos's case led investigators back to Waveney Park in New Canaan, the location where Jennifer's SUV was discovered abandoned hours after her disappearance. Connecticut State Police issued a statement regarding the search explaining that the action was taken out of an abundance of caution to explore every avenue related to the case. They emphasised that such follow-up operations are standard practice in their commitment to exhaustively investigate all potential leads. This search demonstrated the ongoing, meticulous efforts by law enforcement to piece together the events surrounding Jennifer's tragic disappearance. On March 29, 2022, a judge rejected Michelle Traconis's request to have her GPS ankle monitor removed, while she remained out on bail, awaiting trial. This decision came amidst ongoing legal proceedings related to her alleged involvement in the case concerning Jennifer Farber Dulos's disappearance. Michelle's attorney, John Schoenhorn, not only sought the removal of the ankle monitor, but also requested that prosecutors provide additional evidence as part of the discovery process. The state agreed to comply with this request, indicating a willingness to share the relevant information. Furthermore, Schoenhorn petitioned for the return of electronics that had been seized from the Traconis family, specifically mentioning a computer belonging to Michelle's daughter and a phone owned by her mother. This aspect of the legal process underscores the comprehensive nature of the investigation and the impact on those connected to the case. On April 26, 2023, a significant development occurred for Michelle Traconis in the ongoing legal proceedings related to the Jennifer Farber Dulos case. The requirement for Michelle to wear an ankle monitoring device while out on bail was lifted. This decision marked a notable change in the conditions of her bail, reflecting the evolving nature of the case and the legal considerations surrounding her involvement. On May 15, 2023, there was a significant update in the case involving Kent Marhini. As a judge decided to lift the house arrest conditions previously imposed on him. According to statements from his attorney, Marhini gained the ability to travel freely within Connecticut. However, as part of the modified conditions, he is required to wear an ankle bracelet, which will continue to monitor his whereabouts. This development indicates a shift in the legal restrictions placed on Mohini, allowing him more freedom while still ensuring oversight through electronic monitoring. Michelle Troconis's trial began on January 8, 2024, marking a significant phase in the legal proceedings connected to the disappearance and presumed death of Jennifer Farber Dulos. The trial, held in Stamford, Connecticut, has drawn considerable attention due to the intricate details and tragic nature of the case. Throughout the proceedings, evidence and testimonies have been meticulously examined, with both the prosecution and defense presenting their arguments regarding Traconis's alleged involvement in the case. As the trial progresses, it serves not only as a pursuit of justice for Jennifer, but also as a moment of profound importance for all individuals directly affected by the events surrounding her disappearance. Welcome to our timeline review of the high-profile murder trial involving the disappearance of Jennifer Dulos, a mother of five from New Canaan, Connecticut. In this case, Michelle Traconis faces charges related to the 2019 incident that has captivated the nation. As we proceed with the video production covering the intricate details of this complex case, 
we aim to provide you with a comprehensive timeline of events. Our goal is to ensure viewers are well informed of the key milestones and developments that have unfolded since Jennifer Dulos went missing in May 2019. This introduction sets the stage for a detailed exploration of the legal battle and the investigation's progress against Michelle Traconis.